Tossing the bodies of loving animals into the dumpster, the veterinarian had to hold a rag over his mouth. Jesus Christ, he groaned, for the rank smell of the week's worth of rotting pets had grown worse in the baking Indian summer. He made a fortune off of so-called burial services he afforded to grieving families. His nephew filled that tab of the website with stock images of mini burial plots, footprints stamped in plaster. <coughs> ashes, ashes, he coughed as he shoved a dog between a couple cats. Dust to dust, as he coiled a snake on top. Who owns snakes? Not any of his customers, he made sure of it. Snakes were cursed by his lord to wriggle on their bellies and eat of dirt with their tongues. Of course, he learned in school they did not eat dirt, but he allowed his Bible some poetic liberty. The truth was still buried within. Women served men. Man ruled over beast. Snakes were avatars of Satan. Back inside the facility with its yipping crates of drugged dogs and a waiting room of chirps and hisses, rednecks with their hounds and boxes of rodents, he could swear for but a second he saw a chimp. The vet poked his head around the corner and saw nothing unusual. Concerned faces, white knuckles on hands stroking sick matted fur, in the corner a woman swaddling a baby. From the dark folds of cloth, a strange cry came forth, <laughs> like moist respiration from a clogged pipe. Hiding behind the door, he spoke to the young man working the desk, a cheery sort with a prominent cranium bulging rigid and irregular under his taut Colombian skin. How many more? Whole afternoon is booked up. <sighs> I didn't eat lunch yet. Oh, and uh, Mrs. Gilroy uncancelled her appointment. The vet slammed a palm hard on the faux marble desk so it shattered the silence. God damn it! All the heads waiting, beast and otherwise, reared in alarm at the scream and slam. The veterinarian tried his best to crease a guilty grin with picked apart lips. He'd already lost eight customers this month. He coughed. <coughs> Sorry, sports game, he explained lamely, but it was enough. The young man smiled up to him. You okay, Papa? Just send in the next customer. Patient. Whatever. Two customers later, he was washing snake blood from his butcher's block or table or whatever. School was decades ago, and he had ran off most of what he was taught. Liberal propaganda. Ganda, he'd swear to himself, watching the news until he fell asleep on his couch bed. All those years he wasted learning anatomy and biological processes, the way the organs felt under skin, expensive brainwashing, all of it. He veterinarianed his own way, thank you very much. The young man appeared at the door. Ready for the next patient? No. The man laughed. <laughs> Miss Crispo, Dr. Stavens is ready for you. The vet cursed, begging for a goddamn moment to himself to sit in the bathroom, stink out of shit, and read the news on his phone. As Miss Crispo walked into the exam room with her swaddled, moistly breathing bundle, the vet was fighting a fury bubbling beneath his surface. Slunk in a chair, hands rubbing blood into his cheeks, he ignored her. Afternoon, Dr. Stevens. Hmm. I'm worried about my little tipper. Sure, sure. Dr. Stevens doubled over in a squall of a sigh, then stood, resigning to his work. So, what is the problem with your... Oh, what the fuck? The woman had her pet free of its swaddling, so it crawled crab-like across the table, streaked with snake blood residue. This was the chimp he could swear he saw, but it was not quite a chimp, hairy though it was. Under a thin fuzz of staticky hair and pink freckled skin, its features were jarring and asymmetric. Spider-like fingers on simian hands, a bulging mouth of gap-ridden baby teeth. 
the nose inverted a half inch into the skin, sitting left of center between saucers of pupils, spaced like an iguana, staggered like a Picasso. It was crying. The tears were almost human, but the sound was all wrong, shrill as a boiling kettle, the open mouth stinking of horse shit. What the fuck is this? he asked. He's my little tipper. You aren't listening, the vet said, prodding the stinking creature hard in the gut so it toppled over. What is it? He's sick, that's what. The woman was crying, tugging her creature with its sweat-glazed skin by the diaper, so it returned to her chest. Her hair hadn't been brushed in weeks, and her teeth were piss yellow. Her right pocket was wet with lactation. All right, the vet carefully resigned. I'll, I'll give it an exam. Him. The vet ignored the woman and felt around Tipper's body, naked except for the diaper smeared with what he hoped was dirt. The thing was breathing in its wet rattle. He wrapped a gloveless palm about its abdomen. The liver was bloated, the kidneys underdeveloped. He prod a finger down the zigzag of spine. Inbreeding, he figured, and lots of it. All the way, the thing squirmed under his touch, panicked eyes pleading for comfort. He's a very, very, mm, very good boy, the woman whispered. The vet stuck a finger under the thing's upper lip, inspecting the swollen gums dotted with purple dark blemishes. The creature tried to bat his hand away, but he shook it until it stopped. Adult teeth were painfully reconfiguring the mouth, and several baby teeth were already stacked upon emerging molars like a duplex. Primate teeth were supposed to be larger, he thought. Sometimes he's naughty, though, the woman grieved. Oh, he makes me mad. So devious, so disrespectful. Don't deny it, Tipper. You see, he doesn't listen. He keeps breaking out of his crate. The vet started undoing the diaper. He wants to sleep with Mama, but we don't like that in my house, now do we? The thing shook its head. It could understand her. Dr. Stavens had a strong gut, but he felt sick. I'm, uh, I'm gonna take its temperature now. The woman made a sharp intake of air. Please be careful. The vet screwed his eyes at her. He was rarely warned in the course of an exam. With increasing nausea, he tossed the diaper aside, the stench of it vile and overwhelming. He gagged. (sighs) Ever since the surgery, he's been getting worse. Surgery? Miss Crispo didn't explain further, nor did she need to. The veterinarian's stomach convulsed as he turned the creature over, willing the empty organ to heave up anything. The area hidden by the diaper was shaved of the light blonde hair, peppered with razor burn. There, between the legs, bruises green and yellow surrounded a winding trail of fat wire X's. The thermometer dropped and shattered, mercury pooling in orbs. My God. Oh, my God. God, the vet whimpered. Albert, he called to the man at the front desk. Albert, none of the other vets would do it, Miss Crispo said. So I read a few websites. They had pictures and were very detailed. Albert, please, I need you, Staven shouted. This was not a chimp. Oh, with Ruddy, it calmed him down so quick. That's what doctors always say. They said, you know, it would calm him down once they were gone. You should see how he behaved so gentle and fresh. She was crying now, and her pissed teeth gnashed side to side. Albert opened the door and stood transfixed by revulsion. The doctor's frightened look, the sobbing woman, the weeping stitches of the botched neutering. Yeah, Papa? Take Miss Crispo to the other exam room and call the police. The woman starts screaming the moment the young man's hands took her shoulders. Tippy! 
she cried, kicking the walls and fighting the secretary. Tippy! My Tippy! The child squirmed in desperate quakes of energy, fighting the veterinarian and watching Miss Crispa with creased eyes and fits of shakes. Mama! Mama! The child gurgled, slick with fever. Mama! 